In this video, we'll be going over the basics of how doors and windows work in Chief Architect. The door and window tools can be found on the top toolbar near the left side if we're using the default toolbar configuration. Otherwise, we can go to the build menu and find either door or window. Both of these objects are considered openings in the program and behave similarly. Openings include doorways and wall niches. If we go to the door tool and click hinge door and then hover over a wall, we'll see an outline of the door before we place it. If we move our mouse slightly down, we can also change the swing side of the door before placing. Clicking will place the door in the current configuration. We can then press spacebar to get out of the door placement mode. Click on the door to select it. On the edit toolbar at the bottom of the program, we have a couple tools to change the hinge side of the door. This tool will change the hinge side of the door and this one will change the swing side, flipping the door from swinging to the inside or to the outside. Clicking on either will change the door accordingly. Since I have my temporary dimensions on and the door is selected, we can click on either dimension measuring to one side of the door and then enter a specific value to more precisely position our door in the wall. We can also use the edit handles on either side of the door to widen it and the square edit handle in the middle to reposition it. By default, when a door is sized to 48 inches or wider, it will change to a double door. This can be configured in the door specification. With the door still selected, click Open Object on the Edit Toolbar to open its specification. We have a number of different properties we can change for doors, sorted into different panels on the left side. In the General panel, we have properties like the door style, which can be chosen from the list with additional styles available in our libraries, the door type, and swing angle, referring to the view of the angle in your floor plan view or in 3D when the door is set to appear open. We also have the size and position of the door, including the elevation reference, and we can make modifications to the panel itself, like the total height of the panel within the door frame. This is typically automatic, but we can uncheck this and specify it ourselves. Or we can just specify a bottom offset to tell how far the bottom of the door panel is raised from the floor, which will then adjust the height automatically. We also have a panel offset, which will let us move the door panel forwards and back in the frame of the door, and panel frame widths for door styles that have separate panels. In the Options panel, we have settings to force the door to be a single door or double door regardless of width, we can change swing directions, and we can add schedule designations for tempered glass or fire doors. On the Casing panel, we can choose the casing and can do so separately for the interior and exterior if it's already an exterior door. If it's an interior door and we want to have separate casings, we can go back to the general panel and check the setting at the bottom that says separate trim and materials on each side. This setting will not be visible on exterior doors, however. We can similarly modify lintel settings and lights if we're working with a glass panel door, and we also have jam options. On the jam panel, we can choose whether the door size in the general panel includes the jam or ignores the jam only including the width of the door panel itself. We have many more settings that allow us to control the door in different ways. After we've customized this door, if we want to use this as a default, with the door selected, we can click on the Set as Default button on the bottom toolbar. Now, if we place another door in an exterior wall using the Hinge Door tool, it will be a replica of the one with the modifications we've made. Just like we did before, we can select the door and click Open Object to make modifications, like changing it to a sliding door, increasing the width, and in the Options panel, 
increasing the number of panels. We also have an option to show the door open in 3D views. And this option is also available on the bottom edit toolbar with the door selected. When we place doors on interior walls, they'll appear different from our exterior wall doors since they're using different defaults. We can still set defaults just like we did for the exterior doors. Let's take a look at placing shower doors. To make this easier to see, let's switch to the vector rendering technique by going to 3D and then rendering techniques. Back in the door tool, we have a shower door tool, which we can click to place. Once more, we can click open object with the door selected to modify it. On the options panel, we can choose whether or not the door can swing in both directions, as well as the tempered glass setting. We can also modify the hardware panel settings, like the handles and hinges, including repositioning them or choosing specific styles from the library. Doors will bump into walls if you try and move them in the wall they're placed. This will include casing if casing is applied to the door, preventing the casing from clipping into the wall intersection. Windows work similarly to doors. If we go to the Build menu and Window, we will have a number of different options available. Using the Basic Window tool, let's place it in the wall. Just like the door, if we click Open Object, we can see the different types of windows at the very top. We can also change the width and height and the elevation reference. The Options panel has similar options to doors, but are slightly different. The same with casing, lintel, sill, and the other panels. Windows and doors can be blocked and molded together to act as single units. First, let's place a window in the wall over here. Click Open Object with it selected, and in the General panel, let's resize the window to a 30 by 30 window, and change its types to fixed glass, along with reducing the lights to two in each direction. Let's then make some copies using the Multiple Copy tool, then click on the Interval button. Let's set the interval to 32 inches, so there's some space between the windows, and as we click and drag, it will create windows at that interval. From here, if we hold Shift on our keyboard and click on each window one by one to make a group selection, we can then click on the Make Mold Unit button on the Edit toolbar. Now, these three windows will be treated like a single object and be framed with a single opening. We can then easily copy this window object by selecting it and clicking on the Copy button on the bottom toolbar, then clicking on another wall in our plan. Mold units like these make it easy to save these to our user library for future use, and windows and side lights can be molded together with doors in a similar fashion. To shape windows, we'll start with the Window tool and place a window in one of our walls. Click Open Object. First, we'll make this window a fixed glass. In the lintel panel, uncheck exterior and interior lintel, and also reduce the lights to one. On the shape panel, we have the option to match the roof, which will make the top edge of our window slope the same as the pitch of the roof plane overhead. In a camera view, we can then resize the window to get the shape we want over top our door. We can then copy it, and use the Reflect tool while copying to reflect it to the other side of the door. Next, let's make a circular window. Once more, we'll place a window, click Open Object, make it fixed glass, and this time, make the width and height 48 inches. We'll also remove the lights, 
and lintel and sill if we have any. On the arch panel, we have a variety of different arches we can apply to our window. For this window, we'll select round top, and then we can check the box for reflect vertically, allowing us to make a round shaped window. We also have a variety of shaped windows in the library. For doors and windows, we can create schedules to have a list of each of these objects. If we select a window and click Open Object, we can go to the Schedule panel on the left, and by default, most objects will already be included in a schedule category. We can view this category near the top of the window or modify the category by clicking Include in Schedule As. We can also add information in the Object Information panel, which includes fields we can toggle on to display in our schedules. Schedules can be placed in any plan view, but it can be more helpful to place schedules in a CAD detail to keep things organized, which we can find in the project browser. If we open our schedules detail by double clicking and then go to the tools menu, schedules, and door schedule, we can place a schedule for our plan. Any schedule that's been placed can always be found in the Schedules folder in the Project Browser. Opening indicators can be displayed in elevation views to help indicate which ways a door or window will open. If we create an exterior elevation view by going to the 3D menu, create orthographic view, and choose cross-section elevation, and then click and drag towards the front of our drawing. To view opening indicators, we need to toggle on the layer. In the Active Layer Display options, we can scroll down to Opening Indicators. We can also select an object like a window, and the list of layers will be limited to the layers associated with that object, including our opening indicators. Currently, we have labels toggled on for our windows. The appearance of our labels can be controlled in part by our schedule. If we go back to the schedule, select it, and click Open Object, then in the Labels panel, we can choose to use the callout, use the original label, or use both for the display of our windows in our plan and elevation views. We can then also customize things like the callout text, shape, the size, and its layer. If we go back to the elevation view, we'll see now the callout being used as the label for our windows. We can also change the offset of the labels by selecting the parent object and clicking on the smaller edit handle, dragging it where we want. Alternatively, we can specifically position this in the object specification in the label panel where it says X and Y offset. This concludes our video going over the basics of doors and windows in Chief Architect. To learn more, please see our other videos as well as the built-in help documentation in the program.